the concept came about because we really liked the idea, a mechanic really, that we called self-elimination. Um, and it was giving contestants the, the opportunity to eliminate themselves if they felt they hadn't done well enough. And the reason that we liked that is because that means it's all about self-awareness and knowing your limitations. The best characters on reality shows, the ones we love, are the ones who have no self-awareness. And so there was this thought that we'd put this into a cookery show and create a cookery game show. That was, that was the initial idea. I see Melanie in the morning when I walk down the stairs and advance towards the contestants. And I look at them in the eye and you can sort of see that little glimmer of excitement. But it's sort of dissolved by fear. And then I sort of make a little statement or two. And then I disappear for the rest of the day, really. And Mel spends the time in the kitchen, not me. And so I sort of just sit there, sort of thinking about what I'm going to say to them. And then I go to the tasting room and I eat the food. But no, no one thing, I don't know who's cooked it because I'm not watching. So there's no emotional attachment. There's no, I like this cook or that cook or whatever. It's, and I sort of eat it and I pass my judgments. And it's quite funny in the, in the uh, tasting room with Mel. And that's where you'll see that we're, that we're friends and we've been friends for many years. And then I disappear off again. And then I appear again at the end. And I'll say to them, because I've been sort of writing out my lines. And my opening line might be, the world is filled with painters and decorators who think they're artists. You are both decorators. So now they haven't got a clue what I'm thinking, but they know that I've tasted both of their dishes. And then I will tell them that one dish is better than the other. And I recommend that individual to press their button and take their money and not cry wee 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 all the way home with empty pockets and regrets. As I walk past them, I whisper in their ear, be a realist not a fantasist. Take the money. But it's interesting. Sometimes they take my advice and sometimes they get all rather nervous and they don't think their dish is as good as it is. So they press their button and they go home with their money. But the reality is they would have gone to the final. It's interesting. So it's sort of gastronomic poker. And you see individuals who know that that dish is better than theirs, but they'll defend their position. And then you've got individuals who actually are quite convinced that theirs is a good dish. But by the end of this conversation around the gambling table, they'll press the button. It's quite interesting, the psychology. And that's why I say it's gastronomic poker. And so therefore, it's not always the best chef who wins. There was one person who should have been knocked out in the first round, but they won because they were very skilled with the tongue. And when I say that, with their words, not their palate. When we cast the show for the UK, the only person we talked about was Marco. That, that was our wish list of one and so we were thrilled that Marco did the show and so I think that what it gave us is the fact that when we revealed who the contestants were cooking for they were both excited and intimidated and it upped the level of jeopardy really across the show. I think also people made some really bizarre decisions just because they were so shocked by it all. And so I think in local territories, the thing to do is to find someone who uh, knows their food, um, who has a sense of humour. I think that's, that's really important because the thing for me that was exciting about making the show in the UK was that Marco has a great sense of humour. We haven't necessarily seen that so much in shows like MasterChef Australia, Hell's Kitchen. It really comes out in Humble Pie. And I think wherever you're making it locally, you'd want that sense of humour and playfulness as well. 
and you want somebody that has credibility. That could be a man or a woman. I don't think necessarily it's a male role at all. Uh, the most important aspects are the credibility, just a hint of intimidation um, and a playfulness to it. The hardest bit is not to smile. Trust me. When you walk down the stairs and you reveal yourself for the very first time, what's interesting, you see fear and you see excitement at the same time and they start pulling these extraordinary expressions and you just think, weird. You just want to laugh. And then, you, for example, like that final segment, you chat to them, you say hello to them, whatever, you're nice to them and they're polite and they're perfectly nice. Then there's sort of, you walk into position and you go... And they start sort of shaking you just think, we were just talking, we were having a chat a moment ago, what's happened to you? And you've got to keep a straight face because you can't allow them to know what you know. So you've got to sort of create that bit of jeopardy, you've sort of got to talk in a way that every one of them thinks it's them you're talking about. So if you're talking about one dish being delicious, all three or four of them have got to think, that's my dish. But if you say that one of them was a disaster, you've got to make three or four people think that's their dish as well, even though that they may have cooked the best dish. So you've got to confuse them. So part of my job is confusing them, and my presence sort of intimidates them and makes them feel very insecure. And then when I tell them to stop being sort of delusional, that sort of, and then I walk off and you hear me go down the stairs, 